Hey there, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. And I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at Canopy Evergreen by Weird City Games. Canopy Evergreen is a spiritual sequel to Canopy, which was a fantastic little card game from designer Tim Eisner and Weird City Games that we got to review not too long ago, and man, did we really enjoy that game. Well, now he's back at it again with Canopy Evergreen, and this is one that is coming to crowdfunding, so make sure to check out that link down below in the description of this video after you watch it. Now, if you're familiar with Canopy, then Canopy Evergreen is going to be very in, uh, familiar to you, and it's going to be very interesting to you as well, as it's a lot of the same ideas, but now there's a board, there's some 3D trees, there's some spatial parts to the game. It's a very interesting development with the Canopy uh, base game built into it. Let me show you how it works down below, and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, I have Canopy Evergreen on the table. Let me show you guys all about this set collection, drafting, tableau building game, and uh, how it's going to work. Now, I do want to point out that everything you see here is prototype, so the final artwork components and maybe even some of the rules might change once it's released from crowdfunding. That being said, let's go ahead and get into this. Now, if you are familiar with the original Canopy game, you're going to be very familiar with some of the rules that I'm about to state. And if you're not, then I will explain to you here this portion of the game, which is very much just like original Canopy. This board over here is going to, going to be totally new, as well as this board up here. Now, in this game, you are trying to amass the most points as keeping track on your own player board. Everybody's going to have their own player boards that are going to have a 3D tree bra uh, base already on it, as well as these tokens that are going to, at the beginning of the game, be all turned face down like so, and you will mix them up and then place them randomly on the different spots on the board over here. And then you will have this the rest of the setup here with these cards, and uh, you're going to have animal cards up there at the top. Now, for your game, you will use these pine cones here to hold the cards that you will be uh, drafting from, and these are going to be drafting pools essentially, and uh, the number of players in the game is going to change up how many of these cards uh, piles that you have out here. If you're playing a lower player count game, you'll have it set up as such, but if you're playing with higher player counts, then you're going to have extra ones, and you'll be placing these in between players because you will be drafting cards based off of the people that you're sitting next to and higher player counts. Now, for this, how a turn is going to work, the first thing that you're going to do, do is decide whether you want to purchase one of these animal cards up here at the top on this board by spending a, a number of food uh, that you might have as you keep track of it throughout the course of the game. And the number of food that is needed is this number up here in the top corner. Now you will start the game with one of these animals and what these animals are going to let you do, they're either going to give you victory points at the end of the game or they'll give you some sort of condition like you'll get one point for every three water that you have or it will give you an ability that you're able to do, such as discard one less card than mandated by a single effect. And then some of the uh, abilities are going to have you use the animal tile and flip it over once you've used that. And there is an animal tile for each of the different animals that you have in the game. Here's just some examples of what those look like. Now with these animals, you are wanting to try and get animals of the same type. There are multiple mountain beavers, for instance, because you will get an increasing number of points for however many mountain beavers that you're able to get. But then there's also icons on the bottom and you will get an increasing number of victory points for getting the uh, certain number of these icons as denoted on the bottom of your player aid here. And it shows you that you want to try and get these icons, but you want to chain them together in this exact pattern. And that's going to give you increasing number of points if you're able to get a lot of these icons. Now, that's the, the animals, and that's the first thing that you're gonna be doing on your turn is purchasing an animal if you're able to do so. The second thing that you will do is you will take a look at this first pile right here, and at the beginning of the game, there will only be one card in here. And these cards are going to let you do certain things, such as this particular card, if you were to take it, it would let you immediately put a tree base out on your board. And you can see that there are different trees printed on your board, and you would be able to put that 
that base right there. Maybe I might want to put it right here. Uh, that is one particular option that you could do with this card. A second option that you could do instead, instead of putting a tree base, is you could make a tree that's already on your board a little bit taller by placing it, this piece into the tree. And as you can see, this tree now is a little bit taller and these are 3D trees. Now that's different from orig original canopy because in original canopy, you were just lining these cards up and it, uh, it did look like a tree, but it was flat on the table just because they're cards. So that's what you do. You would take a look at this first pile. If you did not want that pile, you would draw a card from the top of the deck and place it into that pile without looking at it. And then you would look at the next pile which at the beginning of the game is going to have two cards in it. And so taking a look at these cards here, here's some other uh, cards that you're going to discover throughout the course of the game. There is set collection. So I would want to try to get at least two of these cattail moss as denoted by this icon right here because that would give me five points at the end of the round or the end of the season. And here's another type of card. This is a weather card. It's sun and it has four sun icons on it. And if I can get a water and sun, that's going to give me one point. So I want to try to get four water to line up with these four suns. And that would give me four points if I was able to do that. Plus, at the end of the season, whoever has the most sets of water and sun is going to get five points. Whoever has the second most will get two points. So the weather cards are good cards to get. But let's say that I did not want that. I would, again, draw a card blind off the top of the deck and put it into that pile without looking at it. And then I would move on to the third pile, which at the beginning of the game has three cards in it and I would take a look at these cards and there is a canopy card the top of a tree now when you take one of these you are going to take a canopy token and place it on top of one of your trees now this means that this tree is done growing this this tree here could not grow any taller and it has one two uh, pieces. You don't count the base, you count the pieces that you've added to it, and you would multiply that number by this number down here, which in this case is only one. So this isn't the greatest canopy in the deck. It would only give me one point for every piece over here. Uh, now, there are other set collections that you are trying to make with these cards, such as the Trillium here. Uh, if I only have one of these at the end of the season, it's going to give me negative points, so that's not good. I need to try to get two or maybe three or more, and that would increase the number of points that I would get at the end of the season. Now there are negative cards in these, the, in the deck of cards, and sometimes you have to take a negative card in order to get the positive cards. This is a wildfire, and if I got two of the, the fire cards in my hand at the end of a season, then that means I'm going to have to discard two plant cards, such as this Trillium here. And so that's not really good. But if I were to get three or more fire cards, instead of me having to discard two, every player has to discard one. So sometimes if you're taking on some, some fire, it might be best, better to take on a lot of fire because then everybody's getting punished by that. Now there are disease cards in the deck as well. And if you get too many of those, that's going to have you get rid of your animal cards instead of your plant cards, but they essentially work the same way. Now, if I did not want this third pile, again, I would add another card to it, and then I would have to take one blindly off the top of the deck and keep whatever it is. Now, this is Huckleberry, and it has a lightning bolt on it, and so I, when I draw this card, and I will immediately get the benefits off of it, which in this case is going to be food, and then more Huckleberry icons that I have, the more food that I'm going to get. But if I have to discard it for some reason, such as the fire, because it is a plant, I will lose two points. So I want to be careful about when I have that happen. Now, that's the gist of the game. You will be taking cards one way or the other, and when you do, you will reap the benefits or the, uh, the risks from taking those cards, and then it will be the next player's turn. And you will continue to do this until the deck runs out of cards, and that would be the end of the season. You will then reshuffle all the cards and repeat the same process two more times because there are three seasons, and you'll see who has the most points at the end to determine the winner. But I do want to point out what is going on over here is this 
is the biggest difference between original canopy and canopy evergreen. Now, obviously you do have these 3D trees over here. And what you are trying to do with those is you are trying to get trees to be lined up to, from one another along these paths. And on every single path on the board, there is gonna be one of these tokens right here. And whenever you complete a tree and complete another tree on a connected path, if they're differing heights, then you get to claim the token that is in between the two. So this would give me a, a rain, which is going to work with the sun token. And that would be a permanent rain that I get for the rest of the game. Uh, and you can see what some of the other tokens are. Here's another huckleberry, which increases my food. Here's one of those uh, uh, icons that you're trying to use to complete the uh, set collection with the plant cards in the deck. But if they're the same height, you're not gonna get these tokens right here. Instead, you will get to flip that token over and you'll get one victory point at the end of the game. And so that's how the trees are going to work and you're trying to balance that out, getting trees out here. Now at the end of the season, you're gonna see whoever has the tallest tree as denoted by the number of pieces in it and you will award them the tallest tree for that season and uh, they will get an increasing number of points as the game goes along. And then at the end of the game, you'll see whoever has the most completed trees and they will receive the largest forest award, which will be a, a, a significant number of points for them at the end of the game. You do have a card frequency outlay uh, outline here, which tells you how many cards of each type are in the deck, depending on how many players you're playing with. And uh, you also do have player aids here to help you remember what you're trying to do and uh, what happens at the end of the season. But otherwise, that's what you have here with Canopy Evergreen. Let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this one. And we're back, and now we're going to share our thoughts on Canopy Evergreen from a gamer and non-gamer's perspective. So Sam, first, let's start with just regular Canopy, which was uh, a card game that came out, I think, uh, a year or two ago, and uh, it was one where you were had this really unique drafting idea where there were yeah. three different piles, and you only got to look at the smallest first pile and decide whether you wanted it or not. And if you didn't, then you went on to the next one and you would add a card without looking at it to that first pile. And then you basically made the same choice. Do I want the second pile or do I move on to the third pile? Yeah. And some of the cards are great. Some of the cards don't do anything for you. And then some cards are bad cards, but you have to take them if you take the yeah. pile. And I thought that was a really cool idea to the drafting mechanic yeah. that I had never seen before. I think it really kind yeah. of impressed both of us. Yeah. And so now... We're back at it again with that same mechanic, but it's kind of been expanded upon with a board, some 3D trees, yeah. and it just really feels like a bigger experience with this one. What was it like for you getting into this, having it, having experienced and liked regular Canopy? Yeah, I really liked Canopy, and I thought that this was a really good expansion of that. I thought um, the 3D trees um, and the little map that you have really made it come to life just a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and then you have the animal cutouts and things like that. So yep. there's still quite a bit of cards, but it, it does feel like a more, I don't want to say developed, but just bigger game. Flushed out is kind of the yeah. idea that yeah. I get with this one. And, and that doesn't necessarily mean that Canopy is yeah, obsolete no, 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 no. or anything, because I think Canopy definitely still has a place because yeah. it is a, it's a, a, a more straightforward rule set and it's more portable because it's just cards. Yeah. Um, and so there's a time and place for Canopy, but man, if you are wanting a more flushed out board game like experience, then, and you, and you already like Canopy, yeah then you're going to be blown away by Canopy Evergreen, I feel like, because there, this is just, uh, it, it takes something that was a, a home run already, and then it just loaded up the bases and now it made it a grand slam, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, because you, you have the board like Sam's talking about, and with that board, there's lots of choices about where am I placing my trees, how tall am yeah. I making them, what t tokens am I trying to there's get. A, there's, I think there's a little bit more strategy oh, than yeah. with the original canopy. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. There's a lot more choices to make, which would make you think that this is going to be a heavier, yeah. longer game, but I don't think that that was the case. No. What was it like for I you as a non-gamer? I think it was probably a little bit longer than the original canopy, but as far yeah. as difficulty I did not find it to be very difficult I think everything is pretty self-explanatory there's a couple times where I maybe needed clarification but 
it was a game that I very much, the first time playing it, was independent and in playing it. Now, Sam, I want to ask you, because we've had other experiences before here on Love to Hate, where there was a base game that you, you really enjoyed, and then they came out with something new for it. Not Maybe an expansion, or maybe it was just a second game that was uh, is a little bit different than the first game. And I've heard you say this a, a time or two before. Why did they have to go and shake up yeah. something that I knew and I enjoyed? Did you have that experience no, with this? No, I mean, it, it has been a, a little bit since we've played the original Canopy. So it's not something where there are times where we'll get the original and the expansion at the same time and I'll be like well I just like it how it was um but I do feel like this was very similar and they added only good things to it they didn't add too much or go overboard or make it too complicated or much more uh, geared towards a gamer right. it was still the same idea just more developed yeah I would agree with you on that I feel like everything that was added to Canopy to make Canopy Evergreen i I liked every single one of the yeah. additions. I don't know that there was anything that was added to it that I would... Uh, they were going for the exact same audience that yes. the first game was. Yeah. And I think sometimes when uh, something is added, it's maybe not for the same audience. It's for... Trying to in include somebody that wasn't already yeah, included in the yeah, first game. Yeah, they don't need to be. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think this game, it, it, it adds to the decision-making space that you already had with Canopy. Yeah. And it doesn't make it feel bloated and, and, and triple the gameplay time. It doesn't even double yeah. the gameplay time. And so it feels like I'm making a bunch more decisions and just a little bit more game time than what I was making in Canopy. Yeah. So for me, this is just, an, uh, like I said, it's a grand slam for me because it took something that was already fantastic and just doubled the experience yeah. for me. So, uh, man, Tim is making some fantastic games with Weird City Games. Uh, Leaf is one that you're definitely going to want to check out later this year. We got to pre preview that last year, and I think it's going to be a top 10 game for 2023. Canopy Evergreen is probably going to be a top 10 game for <laughs> yeah, me in 2024. So, <laughs> so yeah. he just keeps knocking it out of the park. I really enjoy the stuff he's been putting out. So uh, the game is Canopy Evergreen, again, from Tim Eisner and Weird City Games. Leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this game. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.